Hello there! So this is your friend Rubato and I'm now here to give my review of Miss Grant International 2019. It's finally over! All this brouhaha regarding Miss uh, Samantha Loss travel to compete in Venezuela and her controversial performance during the preliminary round would just be relegated to the background and we will move forward. Now a lot of Pinoy fans were a little bit <laughs> hurt and uh, some are a little bit angry at me by hitting Samantha Love. All the things that I have said about Samantha Love's performance were just based on what I felt and on what I saw. I was just being straightforward. I didn't like Samantha Love's performances during the swimsuit and uh, gown preliminary competition. Some might agree with me and some don't. So if you liked it, then go. You have my respect. Then if I didn't like it, then I hope, even if there is no respect, just swallow it. Because you are here at Body Views. Now, the bottom line is, I love Philippines because I am 100% Filipino. Of course I support Philippines, even if I don't give them placements in my rankings. That doesn't mean that I don't care. Now, what I gave Samantha was constructive criticism. I just hope that the trainers out there in the Philippines would give even a short time to go to YouTube and review all these comments, not from me basically, but from other Pinoys or from other international vloggers as well. And not only the vloggers, but also the comments, you know, the comments from the viewers. A lot of them are worthwhile to read. A lot of them would give some essential push towards, you know, the development or the progress of your candidates. So they really have to, you know, if they really feel that they are, you know, on a different level, unreachable. <laughs> I'm not saying that all of them, maybe some, think that way. Please go down, even for a minute, and look at these comments from this ordinary people because most of the times they could give some tips that would be very helpful to you and your candidate. Yeah, I think so. Now, the super buggy twirl that she did and the action-packed display of her wares in the swimsuit round didn't do wonders for her. So I hope it would serve as a lesson that you know we should compete as a powerhouse country. You know, alam niyo hindi ba? Hindi naman sa nagiging arte. Siyempre, konting control, konting regal touch, konting finesse. Huwag tayo makipagsabay ng super... Hindi pa, alam mo yun? It's, it's Grand International and it's very much identified with those exaggerated moves. But the other queens from those top pageant countries like Venezuela, Puerto Rico, who else? Mexico. They kept their poise. They have showed to the universe, to the world, that they didn't have to do extra moves just to attract support or points from the judges. They would just be there and look at the other candidates, smirk <laughs> or green, <laughs> and just do their thing slowly, like a queen. You know, I was expecting something like that from Samantha because number one, she was not as great as other candidates, even from the Binibini Pilipinas time. When it comes to Pazarella, she's basically a lady who could be a queen without moving a lot, <laughs> without doing some acrobats on stage. The judges, the judges, not the judges, the trainers of her should have known that. They should have known better because I sympathize, Samantha. I said during my live, prelim my live stream that we should not blame Samantha, we should, you know, uh, I mean nothing like that should have happened or nothing like that could have happened without her trainer's approval. Or in, in short, she just followed the trainer's directions. Someone contradicted that in the comment section of my live stream. She said that I agreed with you, Arubato, but except for one thing that it is not the fault of the trainers. It is also Samantha's. And, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a collaboration. So it's, 
there's also some points or there's some truth in that comment. But for me, it's 90% the trainers because within those three or five or six months of training, you should have known that Samantha cannot just do this thing. Samantha is just limited to doing that thing. Samantha cannot be overexposed to this kind of strategy or, or she cannot be, you know, persuaded to to do this kind of routine. Something like that. They Again, they should have known better. I don't want to sing, but they should have known better. That, that's what you could give in six months to a candidate you didn't even study you know her character and her ability it was not measured by by the group and i think it is part and parcel of training candidates you should have this at least in one hour you could do it at least one hour of looking at what she could do okay candidate number one for one hour just do your thing and we will be watching go Still, I don't condemn those trainers because I don't know the real score, you see. Even if I say all these things, we should not hurl tirades <laughs> or we should not attack the trainers or Samantha. Maybe they have done their best. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so let's just be friends for life <laughs> and go on and support the remaining girls who would be competing internationally like wow I am really looking forward to seeing and interviewing Patricia Magdenong <laughs> I've already contacted my friend and you know I am loaded because believe it or not I am working here <laughs> that's why you seldom see my videos regularly because I have a work unbelievable but true as a final statement though regarding Samantha Law's dream to become a queen international queen of that I think the the nicest I think the ideal pageant for her is Miss World para less yung yung mga pasabog sa pasarela and so on and so forth what do you think? For me, I don't want her to join anymore, but if she really wants to continue her journey, then go to Miss World. We will now proceed to Does Venezuela deserve the award or the crown? Miss Venezuela has been leading my radar for the past uh, two weeks and uh, she was or she gave a good performance in the swim to preliminary, in the gown preliminary. I think she is eloquent. I think Venezuela deserves someone to inspire them amidst all these problems in their economy and other things, you know, peace and order and so on and so forth. Uh, her winning is a triumph and it's a solid proof that you can win in your own land as long as you, as you deserve it. He performed well. I can never question Venezuela's winning. I think she deserves it. Panama! Well, she's my choice for the swimsuit award and she won it. So I am, you know, already settled with that. Her performances are the same. I think if she wins the title, it would be fine. Whether her answer to the question is good or not, I wouldn't tackle that anymore. But when it comes to the image, the projection, I think she could also be the queen that night. But Venezuela deserves it. And one distracting point there is that when she said during the preliminary, you know, Panama is a little bit uncomfortable to listen to or to look at yung kanyang kabuuan habang nagsasalita ng kanyang pangalan ng kanyang country but nalagpasan niya yun because she was really regal looking and very very confident yan now in our live stream I said that Miss Thailand would win second runner up and she did <laughs> it was chamba to the max 
<laughs> but I was really thinking that she would place a uh, place that she would place in the top three. It happened, and I'm glad, of course. <laughs> Miss Mexico, I was really surprised that she would go that far. In fact, in my swimsuit round during the presentation at the preliminary, she was not in my list. And then she gradually, you know, gets stronger and stronger as the pageant goes by and... She was beginning to be more polished in her every move. So I think she deserved that spot as well. I was a little bit frustrated with Peru. I think they should have given it to Peru this time. But you know what? There are a lot of girls in this pageant that... If I could only suggest, you know, to their countries, they, they just appoint them and bring them all to Miss Universe next year. Peru. Dominican Republic was a little bit frustrating because she was good in her gown. She was good in her swimsuit, but when she stopped, she's just straight like that. <laughs> you wouldn't see any, you know, any sexy form. No curves at all. She should have, you know, gone to the side a little bit and, you know, pushed her butt a bit. <laughs> The surprising candidates who made the top 20, Japan. Of course, I welcome her entry to the top 20 because I'm here. I should support Japan. And during the uh, final round, during the final competition, when she was called in, she already exuded that uh, gorgeousness. You know, she already looked prettier than before. But in, you know, her performances during the preliminary round were not impressive at all. It's maybe there's something in her that the judges saw. Like, for example, she might be really good in communicating, you know? She might be speaking in English or she might know Spanish. And that would be a big plus. Or Portuguese or whatever that Latin world speak. That would be an advantage, of course. So who knows? Well, there are a lot of Brazilians and Peruvians in Japan. They're just like sister countries. Yeah, I think so. The other surprise was the exclusion of India. I was expecting that India would be there. I think she's the strongest, the second strongest from Thailand, coming from the Asian region. And I, I'm not surprised at all with Czech Republic. I was anticipating that she would be in. I never thought that Vietnam would not be in the top 20. I think she's stronger, yeah. And that made me more surprised with uh, Japan's entry. You know, that's what I've said, there are other factors that determine your inclusion to the top 20 or to any semi-finals list. Yung galing mo magsalita, yung, yung impressions in the judges, the first time that they saw you coming in during the interview, the impact that you create, the hair, the, you know, the personal preferences and so on and so forth. Some judges would prefer uh, a woman of substance, you know, you know, through her words, through her regal looks, through her you know, uh, academic background, and so on and so forth. Some judges would just, you know, would prioritize the physical, but it's still divided into two. Those who prefer uh, a little bit open, out and loud, and those who prefer a little bit demure. So maybe Japan, so maybe a lot of judges prefer a demure one, so Japan entered and Vietnam out. surprised with USA's non-entry because from the very beginning I didn't like her. Her overall aura is overpowered by her two-pointed nose. It's very prominent and a little bit distracting. Sayang, ang ganda ng kanyang tindig. There should have been another African there and I would say it should be Nigeria. Brazil is so beautiful. She's one girl that could win Miss Universe someday. <laughs> if she's still, how old is she? I forgot. I really like the eyes. It's mesmerizing. And the newly crowned Miss Earth. She's Pang Miss Universe. 
really. So, all in all, I like the show. With you know what's rants against Pinoy's, it is understandable that a lot of pageant <laughs> pageant fans are angry at the what. But his pageants are really, if not great, they are nice to watch. Now what knows how to tickle the fans? Banak ang banak. It is the one which is pageant kung pageant. Yan ang gusto ng Pinoy's. Ng Mayoria, of course. Still, Miss Universe is on top of my list. Of course. So the show was well directed. Uh, there is great choreography. There are the great you know, visuals, great backgrounds, beautiful swimsuit, the yellow one. I like the music. I agree with the winners. And it's just full of entertainment. It is one show that, as a fan, as a pageant fan, kumekembot ka rin habang kumekembot yung mga contestants. Aminin. <laughs> so, that is my short <laughs> review of Miss Grant International. And please watch out for my uh, second hot list for Miss Universe coming up next. Marami pong salamat, dear friend, about the second I get to go to Semas, and congratulations to all the winners.